Hi there, Charles Rivera here. And in this video, I'm going to show you something that's a, kind of a common question. Uh, a lot of people seem to be asking this. I see it a lot on YouTube and on different blogs and forums and things. And people want to know, how do you match up or how do you sync the audio and video together if you record them separately? Because as some of you know, I don't use the microphone for my camera. Like I don't have my camera, my mic plugged into my camera. I have my microphone plugged into my external audio recorder back here, my Zoom H4n. So here's the, the wire running to it. So over here, I have my 550D T2i DSLR camera set up and it's recording the video. It actually has audio coming through it still. And over here, what I'm using to get the best audio quality is my Zoom H4n. So after I'm done shooting this video, I have two files. I have one file from my DSLR camera, and I have another file from my um, Zoom H4n, from the audio. So the question is, how do you match the two of them together so it makes one video where the audio comes out the right way? And there's actually a little bit of a trick to it. Um, now there's a simple technique you can use for actually syncing it, and Hollywood has done this for a long time for making their films, but they use a device called a clapboard. And that's that board looking thing that you've seen before in shots, how they hold it up and they say, you know, take three or whatever it is. And they, they clap the bottom down or clap the top of it down like that. And when it claps, it makes a loud pop sound. Well, when that pop sound hits, it causes audio spikes that you can actually visually see when you're doing your editing. Because when you, I'll show you in a second here, but when you're running your audio and your video through your editing software, you can actually see the, I guess, sound waves, I don't know how to describe it, the waves that, that your audio makes for your audio file. So when it makes that loud pop sound, you see this huge spike that jumps up and comes back down. Well, there's a technique you can also use if you don't want to buy a clapboard that a lot of videographers use and a lot of filmmakers and YouTubers, stuff like that. All you gotta do, very simple, you just clap your hands. That's it. Just clap your hands about three or four times just so you have those nice audio spikes. So how that works is you have the audio spikes from your camera because like I said, I'm still getting audio through my camera. I'm just not using that audio. I'm using this audio. So you have audio spikes from your camera and you have audio spikes from your external recorder like I'm using. And what you do is you take those spikes from the camera and your external recorder and then you match them up so they're exactly in line. And it's kind of confusing if you don't know what that looks like. So let's just go ahead and cut the screen capture and I'll show you what that looks like and how you do that. And it's really simple. It's not very hard at all, but um, I think you're gonna like it. Hold on a second. So right now I have ScreenFlow opened up and ScreenFlow is normal. It's a software program normally used for recording screen capture videos. Screen capture videos are just like you're watching right now where the program records exactly what my computer sees so you can watch the exact same thing that I'm watching. So you can see like what I click on and what I type and you know all that stuff. Um, but what ScreenFlow also does is it allows you to import any kind of external um, audio file or video file. Now normally I use Final Cut Pro for doing all my video editing with but I'm going to show you how to do this with ScreenFlow because ScreenFlow is a lot more clean cut and it's a little more simple for you to understand exactly and be able to see exactly how I sync the two files up. And your program might be different than mine. I don't know what you're using, but um, they're pretty much all the same when it comes to syncing up these types of files. You're going to use what's called a timeline. Down here at the bottom is the timeline for ScreenFlow. And the timeline is where you get the drop in all of your audio and video files and do your editing from there. So I'm going to go ahead and first import the two files that I made. I did a, a little test video. This is the video file from my DSLR camera. So I labeled it T2i video. And this is the audio file from my Zoom external audio recorder. So I'm going to select both of those import them and now I'm going to drag each file down to my timeline. 
So this is the video, obviously. This is the audio. I'll drag the video down first. Okay. And I will drag the audio down right underneath that. Now, on some software programs, whenever you drag in your video file, it will show you two separate files. It will show you your video file and your audio file. Now, remember, like I said, when I recorded my video with uh, my DSLR T2i, I was still using the built-in mic just for syncing up the audio purpose. So the built-in microphone was still recording audio. So the audio is in here. I just need to separate it. You probably won't have to separate it on your program, on your editing program, but on ScreenFlow you have to. So I'll just click on Detach Audio. Okay. So just so you're not confused here, this is the video file. This is the audio that came from the video file because it says TTY. See, the same. And this is the Zoom external audio recorder. This is the audio file that I want to keep. This one I don't really care about. All I really want to do is use, visually be able to use both of these files to match up the audio spikes. All right, so if you look at right here, you can see these three little spikes. You can see them up here, and I have them later too. And these are the spikes that we're going to match up. Actually, I, when I first did a test run here, I kind of messed some stuff up, so I had to redo it again. I had to reclap my hands to make it look a little better. So let me just delete off this first half because we really don't need those for this purpose of the video. It's a little loud, huh? Turn that down. Okay, so I'm going to take my audio file and well, actually let's, let's zoom in closer here. I'm going to zoom in as close as I can possibly get. Now when I do this on, when I match up the audio on Final Cut Pro, it works a little differently than it does on here. But you know, you got to make do with whatever you can. You want to get in as close as you possibly can to your audio spike. Zoom in as much as you possibly can so you can match those spikes up pretty close. If, you, if you're off by too much, then it's going to look really horrible whenever you try to run your video. So I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm scooting over the Zoom audio file so I can match it up with the audio coming out of my video camera. There we go. There we go. So you can see it's pretty close lined up. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's kind of a bug with ScreenFlow or what, but I can't get the exact tips of each audio file to match up perfectly. It's a slight bit off. It's like this bottom one is a tiny bit over here. But it still works. It still sounds just fine and it looks fine, so I'm not real concerned with it. With, um, with my Final Cut Pro software, it matches up perfectly, but with this one, it just doesn't seem to, to look like it's perfect, but it does sound perfect, so I guess that's fine. Okay, so they're both matched up, and that means I don't need this file anymore. This is my file from my TTY. I can go ahead and delete that. And I'll just trim this up here. Trim both of these files up. Okay. Now I can scoot them back over. Okay, and that is it. Both files are now matched up. I got rid of the file that came out of my, um, my camera, my audio file that came out of the camera. I didn't need that one. All I need is the nice clean one coming out of the zoom. And I just cranked up the volume on this one so you can hear it a bit more. I don't have my computer plugged into the zoom so you're not going to hear, hear crystal clear clarity crystal clarity however you say it you're not going to hear really good audio that sounds perfect coming out of this because I'm actually going to just hold up my microphone to the speaker and you can listen that way so let's go ahead and play it
All right, so this is a quick little test to show you how you sync up your audio and your video. I'm just showing you what it sounds like, and hopefully everything matches up really well with my lips and the words are coming out right. Okay, so that's it. As you can see, everything matched up pretty good. And like I said, all you're doing is just pretty much matching up those two audio spikes. You have your audio from your video camera and your audio from your external camera, and you're sliding them right over each other, or one over the other, so you can get the exact alignment of those visual spikes. And that's it. It's a real simple technique. Just clap your hands, match the spikes up. Hope that helps. Hope you understand how to do that. And I will see you next time. Take care.